Dear friends, together with Mother the Church, we celebrate today Good Friday. Today, Jesus, the Son of God, Son of Mary, dies on the cross. And yet, we name this Good Friday. What good does this day offer us? Is it good that Jesus is dying on the cross? Or is it good that he is being bruised for our sins? Is it good to kill an innocent person? Is it good to mock a person in public? As social human beings, we would certainly denounce that it is immoral, inhuman and not good. But dear friends, there is one good thing that is happening for us on this Good Friday. And that is, sin of the humanity is being forgiven by God. Another good thing that is happening on this Good Friday is, death is being conquered by resurrection. Love is winning over hatred. Forgiveness is reaching its heights. For us, this is the most sacred day of all days. The Liturgy of the Good Friday invites us all to contemplate on the passion and sufferings of Christ. There are many moving and uncomfortable moments in today's readings. Sometimes too difficult for us to contemplate and meditate. But dear friends, we must not run away from pain and discomfort. There are several moments and characteristics where we can align ourselves with. Perhaps Judas, who betrayed Jesus, Simon Peter, who denied Jesus, or the soldiers who were only following what was asked to them, or even the women who were following the group silently, or even the spectators watching from far away. But those spectators which were feeling pity and pain for Jesus in their hearts. Dear friends, if we are among those spectators today, we are blessed, we are lucky, because we stand with Jesus. We feel in our hearts pain for Jesus, the suffering which he bore. And to those spectators, he invites today with words, anyone who wants to follow me must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. When Jesus challenges us to take up his cross and follow him, he is not imposing suffering and death on us. We all have our crosses in our lives to take up and carry, but rather he is inviting us to unite our sufferings with his, so that he can carry our sufferings on with him on his cross. Ours were the sufferings he bore. Are the sorrow he carried. And by dying on the cross, he offers a perfect sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. St. John the Baptist calls Jesus the lamb that lays his life for many. Lamb that is being taken to be slain for the forgiveness of many. His blood washes away the impurity of sin from our lives. In our normal day-to-day -day lives, blood is thought to be stain. And we wash the stains of blood with water. We wash blood with water and the stain of sin on humanity that need blood to be taken away the sins and that blood washes the sin from our lives. It makes us pure, it makes us holy, and it makes us worthy for God. 
This is not only the meaning of the passion and death of Christ. It is not even the most important. The most profound meaning is not social, but mystical and spiritual meaning. That death redeemed the world from sin. It brought the love of God to the furthest and darkest place where we human beings were. Christ is lifted up on the cross today to shelter us and to save us. Christ is lifted up today and we will go to him and we will kiss the cross. We will go to him to ask the mercy from him. Let us think of millions of people around the world that will be venerating the cross of Christ today. Though, due to coronavirus, we have been obliged to stay at homes. But let us take a moment to look at, at the cross of Christ that hung in our homes. Let us venerate Jesus on those crosses that are in our homes so that we, like St. Francis of Assisi, would say, We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The cross is like a tree, bending over us, showering grace of God upon us. And on the cross there is ultimate goodness hidden under the evil, Strength underneath weakness, grace beneath disgrace, a suffering king doing good in return of evil. On his cross, he is saying to the Father today, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Dear friends, let me take your attention to the prophecy of Prophet Isaiah back today that begins with a description of humiliation of the servant of God. But that ends, that concludes with the final exaltation of this Lamb of God. That is not the end. It opens new door for resurrection. It is not darkness that is all around us. It allows the light of God's grace to peep into our lives. It is not failure, but it is summit of exaltation for us. It is not disappointment, but it is keeping our hope on Jesus, on God. In two days, the announcement of Jesus' resurrection, the liturgy gives it a name and a face of victor. Jesus becomes a victor. Let us keep watch and meditate in expectation. It's also a day today, a Good Friday, a day of gratitude. Gratitude for what God has done each one of us.